folks, and welcome back. So we're continuing to talk a little bit about administration inside of Footprints because there's another function from an administrative perspective that is also point and click that many of our customers ask for, and indeed many customers on the wild ask for, whether they are users of TrackIt or not, and that is the ability to create a visual workflow. Right. I want to be able to create a picture that shows me what the workflow is supposed to work like. And Footprints allows you to do exactly that. You can create as many workflow processes as you'd like to manage any kind of requests, special requests, requests that happen on weekends, requests for certain kinds of customers or certain types of orders. Workflow in Footprints is designed to allow you the control to manage that workflow in any way that you see fit. So that means that when we look at a specific workflow inside of Footprints, we're going to see that Footprints will show us a picture, and the picture is the workflow, right? These images and the lines that connect them are actually what Footprints is using to determine where this ticket can move in its life cycle, which statuses it's allowed to move from and to, and as you can see from these little R's here, right? these aren't here because of their piratey nature. They're here because these are rules. And rules allow us to ensure that we notify customers, for example, when the ticket moves from a request status to an in-progress status, or to notify our customer, for example, when we said, hey, moving from in-progress to waiting for customer, we're going to probably want to send an email to the customer on a transition. So the visual workflow designer really allows us to add whatever kinds of workflow we like. If I want to add workflow controls to make this into an approval process, Notice that I can simply drag that workflow control onto the page. I can also drag the rejected workflow out there. Nobody wants to be rejected, but sometimes it happens. And we can make sure that if we define an approval process, like a request, that we can simply pass that approval process directly through to the approved state. And only from approved, then, are we allowed to move it to end progress. I can also move directly from request the rejected state, you can see Footprints is telling me, hey, don't try to connect things that are already connected here. So it's very intelligent about how these workflows are designed. And then, of course, from the rejected state, I would move to closed, and I can then notify somebody right here by adding a business rule that says we should tell you about the fact that we closed your ticket and rejected your request. So through this visual workflow designer, I can add my own approval cycles. I can have as many people authorize a request as necessary, even for full-on change management, or for simple requests for new pieces of software or hardware that our customers may ask for. And I can have as many workflows in my workspaces as I would like. All of these fully controllable just by drag and drop, point and click. Yet my pointing and clicking is actually programming footprints and telling it what it should do without using any programming language at all. Now, the reason, of course, that we talked a little bit about some of the administrative capability of Footprints is because inside of TrackIt, we know that there's simply a limited amount of stuff you can administer, right? You cannot change a lot of the things about the way the tool works. That's both good, right, because TrackIt does make for a nice IT solution, and bad, because once you've grown beyond a certain point, TrackIt becomes a limiting factor in that growth, and you need a tool that can flex with you and that can grow with you, even into designs and concepts that you haven't yet imagined. So when I am able to capture all of those fields and all of the data necessary to manage my process, when I am able to create workspaces to manage any kind of process that I need, that means that I want to have the ability to eventually find those tickets. I want to be able to search for them. And I want to be able to search for the data that was represented in them. So what Footprints lets us do is create a search, a simple search, for literally any kind of terminology, right? These are keyword searches that allow me to do quick and rapid finding of any data anywhere in any ticket. And that means that nothing about Footprints is blind to me. I have the ability to find all the information that I choose. So if I wanted to look for, hey, show me all the tickets in which somebody is mentioning email, and show me that in my incident management area so that I can see in my corporate services, incidents, all email tickets, Footprints will immediately bring back all the email, all the email mentions right here. So anytime email is mentioned in a ticket, Footprints has now returned that. The ability for Footprints to find all of your data, even your custom data that you've added yourself, is really what makes the tool so powerful. 
because you have the ability now to add your own fields to the workspaces and to the forms that your customers and your technicians will use. You can make sure those fields are mandatory so that no one is going to be missing information. And you can then use footprints to begin searching and finding that information. Because finding the information means I have the ability to report against the information. And to that end, Footprints allows us to create more than just these simple searches. It lets us create a full advanced search that allows me to search across all aspects of the product. So I'm going to roll that up out of the way a little bit. You can see my new search is cleverly titled New Search. In this case, I'm just going to find, I'm going to call this Old Tickets. And this is going to be tickets more than four days old that are critical that are not closed. So any critical issue that isn't yet closed, we can search for. Right? And of course, I can make the search private or I can share it with other people. If they're allowed to see shared searches, they have the ability to see this. We can even describe the search in great detail here because they understand you might sleep between creating this search and using it later. And therefore, you can come back and remember why you built this search. You can search in any object in Footprints, right? And we talked about all those workspaces and all those containers. Footprints contains a configuration management database. Footprints contains a service portfolio so that you can manage all of your service catalog entries. It contains a knowledge base, and you can have as many knowledge bases as you want fit for the audience as you'd like. It contains an address book so that you can manage all of your contacts, and that address book can indeed be linked to your Active Directory system so that all of your folks can be captured from there. And every one of those objects, plus any object you've created for yourself, right, any address book you built, any knowledge base you created, any workspace you made, any CMDB, all of them are searchable. So that means there's no data anymore that I cannot find. Every bit of information that I choose to capture will be available to me. And that also means that as I scroll through the list, seeing all of the containers, you can see in my corporate services area, I can absolutely search my incidents. So I'll just double click that and pick the incident records. I can decide what to search for. Right? In this case, I said I want to find things that are greater than or equal to four days old. So we'll just say four days, zero hours, zero minutes. And notice that I can add additional criteria for searching and, and the status isn't yet closed. So I want to be sure that if we're looking for status, that we pick our status field, and that's going to be right up here at the top. Status not equal to closed. So if it's not a closed ticket yet, you probably want to capture it as a part of this search. Now I can tell Footprints which fields I would like to display, and oftentimes that's the status and maybe the record number, the priority. Easy enough to make changes to this as well. If you said, hey, I want record number first, and I can just drag record number to the top, and now it's first in the list. When I go to publish my search, I can decide whether I want to use this as a part of a query. So will this search, returning these tickets that are old, therefore be useful as a part of a report in Footprints, which is called Service Analytics, or not? If I check this box, that means that it becomes more than just a simple search. It can become a, a query for a report as well. And of course, since BMC will be coming out with a mobile version of Footprints, you can also make the search available for your mobile devices. In the end, you can preview the results, see all the tickets that match that criteria. You can add additional columns if you would like. So if I would like to see when these tickets were created, I can easily add a column to show that. This allows me to really create and search for any detail that I want. And saving these searches allows me to call them up later and use them as a part of reporting. Now, of course, reporting is a big deal, right? Everybody wants to be able to get reports out of their system. And in Footprints, they renamed the concept of reporting to service analytics. The reason they did this is pretty straightforward. Everything you deliver in your organization is a service. So it only makes sense that we should analyze how well we're doing at delivering those services, no matter what they are. Hence the term service analytics. So when we look at types of service analytics or reports that we can run, You'll see that typical metrics type reports, there's all kinds of stuff built into Footprints, right? And we're going to talk a little bit about some of this stuff. I can run service portfolio reports so that I can see how quickly I'm resolving issues or whether I'm meeting my service level agreements. I can run custom reports 
which is really any way that I choose to relate the data at all, right? And this is a very common way that folks use it because in this way, through a custom report, you can really compare whatever kinds of factors you like, whatever things matter to you or your process. We could do cross workspace reports. So if I want to look at tickets and incidents and problems, I can see all those or changes and problems or whatever I want to combine. I can do time tracking reporting which allows me to track how much time folks have spent in any ticket. And Footprints will track time to a ticket even if the person touching the ticket isn't assigned. If they're allowed to edit that ticket, Footprints will track the time they spent doing so. So you're never going to lose a minute of time from anybody who spent time resolving an issue or being assigned to a ticket to do work. And yes, you can even create dashboards in Footprints, and we're going to talk about those in just a minute. But dashboards and Footprints can become a mashup really of all of the reports you have, you can simply present those as a part of a dashboard. Now any report that you've built from the list, any of these kinds of reports that you may have constructed, if you built any, they're going to show up down below. So you can see I have a couple of average age reports, a couple of activity reports. You can see I have a few custom reports down here, including the very cleverly named My Report. Okay? Any of these reports can have their graphical output, their output shared so that it can become a part of a dashboard. And really what that means is the dashboard now has elements of all the reports that I've built, and I can simply choose which ones of these I would like to add to my dashboard. If I have 100 different charts, I can pick from all those charts, because every report I write is eligible to become a part of a dashboard if I wish to make it so. So this makes reporting much more flexible in Footprints than what you're able to deliver out of track it. But, if I want to be able to run a specific report, right, if I don't want to be able to just compile a dashboard out of this stuff, if I want to say, yes, I'd like to run a certain report or edit a certain report, make changes to any particular report, Footprints allows us to do that too. From any of the reports in our list, we can click on them, choose to edit them, we can modify our activity reports or our average age reports or any of the other reports that we have very, very quickly because if they're saved in the system, Footprints allows us to make modifications to them. You can see here my my report, the cleverly named my report is up, and you can see that it's looking in incident records. It's using a active tickets as its search. So I created a search before, just like we did earlier, for active tickets, any tickets that weren't yet closed, and these tickets become a part of this report. You see that it's a shared report, so other people who can view shared reports are able to see this one. And I've made it available in the dashboards. So that means this report and its graph is something that I have available to me to use in dashboards. A little chart right down here is actually the chart that's at the very bottom, that's at the very bottom of this report. So we can include that as a part of a dashboard and I can include it as a part of Service Core as well. What that really is telling you is Footprints will let you put that, that report right here on your home screen. So you can also have a, a representation of it right on your home screen when you work if you wish to. Now, this report contains data, right? There's information from the report. I can decide which columns I want to include. And Footprints will, of course, include that information for me in the report nice and clean, nice and neat. And this allows me to export the information either as a raw Excel file or as a PDF. So we'll just go ahead and choose PDF in this case. We'll continue talking. Many people export from their existing tools, many tracking users in particular, to Excel because in Excel they feel that they can better manipulate the data. Right? They have a more powerful tool for analyzing the data, for doing their own formula, for arranging it, for creating charts, etc. And Footprint certainly allows you to export directly as an Excel file if you'd like. But you don't need to. Footprints allows you to manipulate all the information you have right inside of it with no knowledge of SQL. You're not writing SQL queries. You don't have to be a scripter. All you have to do is say, yes, I would like to add a formula. Maybe I want to add a column, right? Maybe I want to insert a new column and use that as my, as my column for adding up formula information. Or maybe I simply want to browse the help file for all the formula to see exactly how these formula can be structured. Because Footprints has a very rich formula language that's available, and you can copy and paste this information in, or of course just create it yourself if you'd like to, so that you can analyze the information that comes out of your reports. I can change the layout of my information by including which columns are visible or not, sorting the information based on any column I would like, filtering it, grouping it, aggregating the data. Of course, 
creating charts. What fun would it be if I couldn't build some kind of cool looking chart? And Footprints lets me build pie charts and bar charts and line charts and scatter plot and even more important charts like heat map and especially gauge charts. But the gauge chart allows us to see if the process is pink and healthy or if it's not working so well, right? Just like the temperature gauge on your car shows you whether your car is running normally or whether it's running a little too hot or a little too cool for the season. Just, you can use these kinds of gauge charts to do that with your own processes. And here's a little side note, building a gauge chart in Excel is not an easy task. You've got to layer a couple charts over the top of each other. They don't have a default gauge chart yet in Excel that I've seen. So you really can't even build one of those in an external tool like Excel. You would have to use something like Footprints to build it. Whatever the chart is that you pick, you can, of course, export this information as we saw as a PDF. You can export your chart if you'd like to as a PDF as well. And it creates very clean and easy to read outputs for your reporting. So you can see that export that I did as a PDF is here. It's selectable so that I can select the text, copying it where I need to. You can include your logo, of course, as a part of the report. You can include all the information from that report. And if you wish to print this report or send it somewhere else, saving it, right, or zooming in on it, expanding it, you can do all of that stuff right from inside of the report. If you wanted to see our chart exported as a PDF, you can see that. It looks very, very clean, very neat, very easy to use. So Footprints really gives you kind of the best of all worlds. You have the ability to create and capture all the data that you need using workspaces. You have the ability to do this without any code, so you don't have to be a programmer. You can manage whatever process you have in-house, because any process that has a beginning, middle, and end can have a ticket type created inside of Footprints through a workspace so that you can capture all the data necessary to manage your marketing efforts or to manage your facilities team or to manage your ongoing projects, or to manage whatever kind of details you would like to manage, human resources requests, et cetera. And because Footprints runs as a web browser, you never need to install a client. So you won't have to keep clients up to date. It'll work on anybody's browser, even your handheld device's browser. As long as the browser supports HTML5, it'll work. So in a nutshell, Tracket users, we wanted to talk to you a little bit about the Footprint solution. We hope that you like what you've seen so far. And we look forward to an opportunity to speak with you in more detail about Footprints version 12.